And like a zombie rising from the grave, when news of Netherrealm Games comes out, you can bet your butt that I'm going to come out of retirement to talk about it. So with rumors circulating that uh, NetherRealm Studios might be working on a Marvel fighting game, uh, I could have made a video talking about uh, my roster predictions for this proposed game. I'm going to take it a little bit further, though, a little bit out of the realm of possibility, but uh, I've always wanted a Marvel versus DC fighting game. If NetherRealm has the rights to DC and Marvel is willing to, you know, mingle, then a Marvel vs. DC game isn't out of the realm of possibility anymore, especially considering that I'm pretty sure in one of those LEGO Universe games or whatever it's called, Marvel and DC characters are there. So I feel like that unspoken rule that these properties can't cross over is maybe not so much a thing anymore. So I have some rules set in place for this potential Marvel vs. DC character roster prediction slash wish list type of uh, video. Uh, that being uh, 30 characters total, that means 15 characters per company. Uh, I had to make it 30 because any less than this, and I started realizing that it was way too hard to justify uh, certain characters not being there. So yeah, this is going to be tough. And once I list all the characters on both sides, I am then going to rank them based on how likely they are to be in the game. Uh, kind of harkening back to the old videos I used to make on this channel where I would talk about how likely certain characters are. All right, so... Let's get started. We're going to start off with the DC side of things first, because, you know, this is NetherRealm's bread and butter. This was the one I had to do the least amount of work for. I got to just look at the Injustice games and think about who I thought would carry over. So let's get started. Number one, Batman. Obvious. Number two, Superman. Obvious. Number three, Wonder Woman. It's not a DC game without the Trinity. So there you go, the Trinity. Number four, The Flash. Yeah, of course. Number five, Green Lantern. Mm hmm. Number six, Supergirl. If there's any character from Injustice 2 that I think would probably cross over, it's Supergirl. Number seven, Cyborg. Now we're getting into characters that I'm less confident about, and that will reflect in my rankings at the end. I won't get into it here, though. Number eight, Green Arrow. Mm -hmm. Number nine, Aquaman. And it's probably roughly at this point that you're realizing uh, just how much I had to uh, expand this, because originally this video was going to be 24 characters. 12 per thing but if that was true i just filled up nine slots with characters that are heroes and the remaining three slots would have been uh tough to justify anyway number 10 the joker i feel like this is a gimme at this point number 11 dark side this will make sense later number 12 harley quinn she's just too popular number 13 deathstroke i would like to see this man make a comeback number 14 king shark now, this is a character that's been getting so much love in nearly every single DC property. I feel like taking advantage of that would be a good idea. Number 15, Captain Cold. Netherrealm Games gotta have an ice guy. So, Captain Cold. Now we're moving over to Marvel. This one's a little bit trickier because I didn't have anything to go off of. So, we're gonna just kind of go under the assumption that there's probably some mcu mandate in place and assuming there isn't i still feel like netherrealm would want to take advantage of that popularity so number one captain america yeah number two iron man of course number three thor if dc has the trinity then marvel movies have their own trinity being captain america iron man and thor so mm -hmm. number four the hulk i just i feel like it wouldn't be a marvel game without the hulk number five captain marvel this is where we start getting into tricky territory, because I know lately this character is not popular with people, but I feel like this character's power set is too good to not include in the game. Number six, Spider-Man. This is one of those characters that I feel like Netherrealm would go out of their way to include in the game. Like, even if there was a mandate in place, I am positive they would try to be like, come on, come on, we can, we can do Spider-Man. Come on, let's do Spider-Man. Number seven, Wolverine. Uh, I don't know where X-Men copyright stuff or rights issues are at the moment but this is another one of those characters that i feel like another realm would have a field day with number eight falcon uh originally in my video i had hawkeye in this spot but as i was editing i decided that falcon's probably a much more relevant character and uh has better gameplay opportunities so switching that out number nine deadpool this is like if they couldn't include deadpool I would be shocked. Number 10, Venom. Uh, I feel like Spider-Man would fill that slot that people complain that the Injustice games have where 
uh, Batman gets too much love and representation, I think it'd be hilarious if Spider-Man filled that same role where Spider-Man just gets just a little bit more love than everybody else. But we'll continue on. 11, Thanos. So this is where the whole me including Darkseid is. I feel like the opportunity to have Darkseid and Thanos in the same game is too good to pass up. Number 12, Magneto. Uh, if we're going to include an X-Men hero, I feel like we have to include an X-Men villain. Magneto would fill that slot. 13, Loki. Loki's another character where I don't think Netherrealm would pass up the opportunity to do something with. Number 14, Abomination. Uh, we'll, we'll get into my reasoning with this later. Number 15, Mystique. We'll once again get into my reasoning in the little thing at the end. So that's the 15 characters. Now we're going to go through and list their in possibilities or how confident I am that they would be in this hypothetical Marvel vs. DC fighting game. And something that ended up being pretty coincidental to me is that uh, I ended up including in the very confident category seven characters for DC and seven characters for Marvel. So that's fun. Uh, we're going to start with DC characters that I'm very confident in their inclusion. Uh, in DC, we have one through five, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, The Flash, Green Lantern. Then we have the Joker and Harley Quinn. Uh, these are characters that, excluding Harley Quinn, all go all the way back to Mortal Kombat versus DC. And Harley Quinn's inclusion is basically, she's a marketing thing now. She's so popular that I can't see anyone passing up the opportunity to use Harley Quinn. So those are the seven characters that I feel really, really confident about if this Marvel vs. DC game ends up happening. That would probably be where they go with those characters. Next on to the Marvel side of things, um, similar justification for the characters I picked. I picked uh, one through six and then nine. So Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, Hulk, Captain Marvel, Spider-Man, and Deadpool. These are characters that are all very popular in the same way and all have a lot of sway in the comics that they are re representing. So to me, it just makes too much sense not to include them. Uh, give it, regardless of thoughts of anyone has in any individual character, I feel like it'd be hard to justify not including any of these. Next up, we're including possible inclusions, characters that I feel like could slide right in easily, but that uh, Netherrealm is unpredictable. So sometimes characters that I think are obvious don't end up being included from one game to another. Um, I.e. Uh, Injustice 1 to 2, I thought Deathstroke was going to clearly go from one to the other, and that did not happen. Netherrealm has a history of being unpredictable. That's what I'm getting at. So, possible inclusions, and I'll use my justification probably much more in depth here. Number six, Supergirl. This one I'm not confident about. I feel like if they are to have a quota for the amount of female representation in the game, Supergirl's a no-brainer. Um, but that role could also be filled by characters that have made appearances in the past, like Hawk Girl or Raven or Starfire. So it's kind of up in the air. And as it stands, my character roster is very light on female representation. So I feel like this is where the area comes in that there's a lot of gray areas. So while Supergirl, in my mind, seems like a pretty obvious inclusion, I never know where Netherrealm's going to go from here. Next up, Cyborg. Um... Cyborg making it through Injustice 1 and 2 is cool. And I feel like his push in the comics to be super popular is an example of why clearly he would be in this hypothetical Marvel vs. DC game. The problem I have is that this also feels to me like a character who would randomly not be included in the game for seemingly no reason. I don't know why. He just gives off that energy. Similar with my next pick, Green Arrow. To me, the Green Arrow versus Hawkeye thing seems obvious. So I would assume that they would make it into the game. But similarly to Cyborg, Green Arrow just gives off that vibe of he would be in the game and then suddenly not be in the new one. I don't know why. Number nine, Aquaman. I Similarly to the previous two, honestly, he just gives off that energy. Um, I just, I get the feeling that Aquaman could be the kind of character that, uh, you could include in another mirror image fight, if I had included Namor the Submariner in the Marvel side, you could have the Kings of Atlantis duking it out. In which case, if I had included Namor in this Marvel list, that would have been obvious. But Namor nowadays is so obscure that I feel like they'd have to really fight for his inclusion. I don't know the last time he appeared in the comics. He might, I, he's just not on my radar. So because that obvious 
versus scenario is doesn't seem so obvious anymore. That's why Aquaman's down here. Next up, Dark Side. I could see them deciding, and this is going to be my similar reasoning for Thanos. I could see them deciding to make Dark Side or Thanos or both unplayable bosses that fuse together, a la Shao Kahn and Dark Side from Mortal Kombat versus DC. So. Darkseid's inclusion here is under the assumption that he's possibly playable, but I could see a scenario happening in which he's a boss character. Next up under possible inclusions, number 13, Deathstroke. Um, this is one of those characters that I was pretty positive would make the crossover from Injustice 1 to 2, and he did not. Deathstroke's popularity goes up and down through the days, so it is really up in the air whether or not he would be included. I think he would be really cool, but you never know. Number 14, King Shark. I was this close to putting King Shark in the very confident category because King Shark is so popular right now. In all forms of media, he's popping up left and right everywhere that I think Netherrealm would be crazy to not include him. But I could also see the argument to be made that if this is Marvel versus DC and you got to get the most iconic of both sides, I could see King Shark getting left out. Ugh. Next up, we're moving on to Marvel and the characters that I think are possible, but I don't, I'm not as confident in. Number seven, Wolverine. I think Netherrealm would do a crazy job with Wolverine, and I think they would love the opportunity. They just, Wolverine strikes me as right up their alley. But I, Marvel's relationship with the X-Men characters is so iffy that I can never be sure. He appeared in Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, which is cool, but I don't know, it's entirely possible that this game would just be basically... Avengers and side characters versus, you know, Justice League and the main crew as well. So I don't, I could see the X-Men getting left out. Falcon has a really decent shot of making it in. I don't think it's a for sure thing, but, you know, if you have only, f I don't know how many slots. Like, NetherRealm games typically start out anywhere between, like, 24 to 30 characters. So... With a limited roster, especially for a crossover game, something that seems obvious to one person might not be as obvious to another. That being said, I think Falcon is an incredible opportunity for unique gameplay involving the wingsuit. So I'd say there's a decent shot, but just to be safe, I'm putting in possible inclusions. Number 10, Venom. Uh, yeah, Venom... I feel like Venom's right up Netherrealm's alley, but I just feel like they try not to push Spider-Man too much because of the weird Sony rights. But man, Venom would be so cool in this. Number 11, Thanos. I'm not going to repeat myself, so basically just refer what I said to Darkseid. Number 12, Magneto. If we're still iffy about Wolverine's inclusion, extra iffy about Magneto. He's an iconic villain that I think would be absolutely needed. But if the whole, whole X-Men scenario is still up in the air, he might be left out entirely. Number 13, Loki. Loki is very much in that similar category. I think he'd have a lot to bring gameplay-wise and would be really fun. But uh, there are just so many possible Marvel characters that could possibly happen in this exact slot that I guess I can't confidently state that I think he would be in there for sure. I just think he's very possible. And that only leaves three characters in my I'm not confident at all about these picks, starting with DC Captain Cold. My reasoning was entirely based on Netherrealm likes to use ice characters. That's about it. Like, this slot could be filled by Mr. Freeze. Uh, it doesn't even have to be on the DC side. If, for some reason, Marvel can totally use X-Men characters, you could just throw in Iceman Bobby Drake. That'd be fine. So, yeah, uh, Captain Cold is a pick that I included based on the flimsiest of reasoning. On the Marvel side... Abomination, uh, I feel like his inclusion could end up being redundant. Uh, it is entirely possible he could be like an alternate skin for the Hulk, one of those premier skin things that they occasionally do. I feel like that would be a much more, you know, valuable position than an entirely different slot on the roster. Uh, so, yeah, it's hard to justify this one as a separate character. Number 15, Mystique. Uh, while I personally think Mystique is really cool, that is entirely biased from the X-Men Mutant Academy games and uh, X-Men Evolution, the show. So while that seems obvious to me, if Magneto's up in the air, then Mystique is super up in the air because I don't see them including Ma Mystique without Magneto. And uh, that's why she's all the way down here in Not Confident. 
Now, yeah, so here is all my reasoning. Uh, if we want to talk about what a ultimate boss character would be like, there's a character from the DC Marvel crossover uh, amalgam comics, I think called Thanos side. That, that writes itself about what the conflict could be. The two universes merging, Thanos and Darkseid fusing due to Infinity Gauntlet shenanigans, and then having to come together or something, or fight each other. Like, it would basically just be the plot of Mortal Kombat versus DC again, just flip out Mortal Kombat with Marvel. So that would be an obvious boss character. Um... Or they could take the villains from the JLA uh, Avengers comic crossover who is completely... I'm blanking on right now. So I'll have to put that in in editing. So anyway, yeah, that's what I got for this video prediction slash wish list for a hypothetical video game. I think it's much more likely that Netherrealm is working on a standalone Marvel game. I just thought this would be a fun topic. Uh, so yeah, if you guys want to talk about what you think would be cool characters to include, do so in the comments. I only ask that you be civil. Uh, if I see arguments breaking out or particular words being said, I'm going to block and delete the comment. That's, I just, I, this topic seems to really get people upset for some reason. I want to nip that in the bud. All right? Cool. Thank you for stopping by.